Music News. A brewer woman was killed in a crash in Waltham Sunday. Good afternoon. I'm Susan Farley. Details are coming up. Governor Janet Mills has signed a new executive order to expand government with a cabinet on aging, we'll explain coming up. And many will be watching the Republican showdown between Bruce Poliquin and Liz Caruso during Maine's primary election. We'll take a closer look along with the rest of our stories. Thank you for joining us this afternoon. First, let's check in with meteorologist Devin Biggs. Devin? Hey Susan, happy Tuesday afternoon. Your first weather forecast brought to you by Luigi and Fredericks across from Eastern Maine Medical Center, serving the greater Bangor area for over 65 years. All right, these things looking pretty good right now. We're looking pretty clear outside at this point. However, we will have to watch for more showers and storms that will try to get their act together during the afternoon period, though. And they'll mainly be moving in from the north to the south and be very isolated and scattered in nature. These could just be a few sprinkles or maybe just enough to be a few showers or storms as well as, they, as things do develop. So you got a little counterclockwise rotation right about in here. That's one area right here. The other area of low pressure is tracking off towards the north and east. So other areas are looking pretty clear at this point. So future cast moving forward, there's that chance for a few isolated showers and a few rumbles of thunder during the afternoon. Some fog will also be possible later on tonight as things start to clear out. As for the winds, they will get a little gusty today, maybe getting up to around 15, maybe 25 miles per hour in a few spots. Most of the wind will definitely occur offshore, especially as we head towards tomorrow. So for today, middle 70s, a few showers and thunderstorms not out of the question, with winds out of the north at around 15 miles per hour. As you look ahead towards tonight, a few isolated showers, lows in the lower 50s, areas of dense fog late, that north wind getting up to about 5 to 10 miles per hour. And our only forecast for the rest of the afternoon period, a mixture of clouds and sun temperatures in the mid-70s. Your full five-day forecast is coming up. Susan? Thank you, Devin. A brewer woman was killed in a crash in Waltham Sunday afternoon. It happened on the Waltham Road just before 4.30. State police say 51-year-old Daryl King of Brewer was driving a motorcycle and lost control on a sharp curve. His motorcycle was hit by an oncoming pickup, killing the passenger 50-year-old Melissa Hatch. Police say both riders were wearing helmets. The driver of the pickup was not injured. A Bucksport family's garage was destroyed by fire Monday afternoon. According to Bucksport Fire Chief Sean Gagan, the garage is a total loss. Right now, he says they do not know what was inside the garage, but no pets or people were injured. There were some people inside, a few people inside that we get out and get out of the door yet safely. He says the side of the house did have some melted siding, but it is otherwise intact. The state fire marshal's office will be on the site today to investigate the cause of that fire. Two people are facing drug charges after they were allegedly found passed out in a vehicle on someone's front lawn in Hudson. State police say 43-year-old Ryan Fish of Hudson and 26-year-old Bailey Bryant of Addison were arrested after police woke the pair up and noticed indicators of criminal activity. Police say during a search of the vehicle, they seized over 182 grams of drugs, including fentanyl, crack, cocaine, and meth. Fish and Bryant were charged with aggravated drug trafficking. Police say Bryant also had two outstanding warrants and was currently on bail conditions. Three Cumberland County Sheriff's deputies are hailed as heroes for saving the life of an 11-year-old boy who was choking in Raymond. Owen Kingsley spoke with the officers. Deputies Christian Stickney, Daniel Place and Tyler Leach all responded to a home in Raymond on the night of Saturday, June 4th, for the report of a choking child. Deputy Stickney was first on scene and almost immediately began performing CPR on the boy who was described as bluish and limp. The boy got his pulse back and partially woke up. Deputies Place and Leach arrived after that when the boy again stopped breathing and had no pulse. All three deputies worked on resuscitating him and he once again regained consciousness. About 10 minutes had passed from when the first deputy arrived on scene to when the boy regained consciousness the second time. All three deputies described to us what was going through their heads when they realized they had to perform those life-saving measures. When I walked in there and I saw the boy that wasn't breathing, he went limp, turning blue, it's nothing. I can't really prepare you for that. Uh, I couldn't imagine that if that was my son, how I would handle that scenario. I wanted to be able to do everything I could for that boy. The boy has since been released from the hospital and his mom has asked the three deputies to visit to thank them personally. All three deputies will receive a life-saving award from the Cumberland County Sheriff's Office.
Governor Janet Mills just signed a new executive order launching the Cabinet on Aging. With Maine having the oldest population on average in the U.S., the governor expects tens of thousands of Mainers to retire over the next few years. The governor's office says they will advance progress on affordable housing, financial security, protection against fraud, access to broadband, and access to new employment for aging citizens. Maine people work hard their entire lives, and they deserve to be able to live safely and with dignity as they age. By signing this executive order to create the Cabinet on Aging, I am mobilizing state government to make sure that that dream is a reality. Mills added that the success of this Cabinet will be measured in the long-term health and happiness of seniors in Maine. Many eyes will be fixed on the Republican showdown between Bruce Poliquin and Liz Caruso today during Maine's primary election. Joe Cortez has the details. Two Republican candidates have been campaigning throughout the state in hopes of gaining a leg up for the right to face off against Representative Jared Golden. And I'm doing this just to help. It's not a career for me. Um, but watching what kind of trouble our country and our state is in was enough for me to say, OK, Bruce, you're going to step up and do what's right here and help your country and help your state. That's why I'm running. We are at a, a moment in time where uh, it is freedom versus tyranny and a crisis at every turn. We need someone down there who is going to fight like their life depends on it, because in many cases it does. With major issues our country faces across the board, many wonder what's at the top of Caruso's list. To be honest, I'm not that career politician that just has two or three talking points that everyone wants to hear. I have a lot of things that need fighting for. And Poliquin believes the major issue starts with the state of the U.S. economy. We didn't have this problem two years ago. I know how to fix it. I'm committed to doing that. And that's one of the first things on the agenda. And in the eyes of these highly respected politicians, they each said they have one major advantage on why Mainers should vote for them. They just want someone real and authentic. And I hear that all the time. Like we could, they say, we could just tell you're, you're genuine, that your heart is in this. I have a record in Congress of standing up and working with Republicans and Democrats, with everybody who wants to help solve the problem. Will Mainers take a different approach with a new face in Washington, or will they stick with a candidate many have trusted before? Find out the results right here on Fox ABC Maine. I'm Joe Cortez for ABC7 and Fox 22. Maine voters are heading to the polls for a special election that will fill the vacated Hancock County Senate seat. As Sierra Jordan reports, three candidates are on the ballot. The Hancock County seat has been vacant for months as Louis Lucchini stepped down in January to take a job with the U.S. Small Business Administration. Three candidates are on the ballot. Republican Brian Langley of Ellsworth, Democrat Nicole Gorowski of Ellsworth, and Green Independent Ben Micklejohn of Mount Desert. Every voter in Senate District 7, which comprises many towns in Hancock County, can participate in the special election. Brian Langley has lived in Maine for over 40 years and has owned the Union Street Lobster Pot in Ellsworth for 28 years. More people know my blueberry pie than maybe know me. Having served in the state Senate for four years, the restaurant owner says he got the experience to help tackle issues facing Mainers, including utility costs, affordable housing, inflation, and more. Creating more workforce housing creating a program that helps businesses who might want to work with developers and a municipality develop workforce housing. However, Democrat Nicole Gorowski points to other issues like affordable housing. We see a lot of help wanted signs and part of it that I hear from businesses is that the people that want to work there just can't find anywhere to live in this area. So I think it's something we need to put greater attention to. As a member of the Joint Standing Committee on Energy Utilities and Technology, she says she aims to lower energy costs for Mainers during the winter season. I'm very proud that we invested uh, millions of dollars in home energy efficiency programs and I really hope that even though summer's coming, Maine people will think ahead and get those great contractors that are part of our workforce to their, to their homes to insulate them, to add heat pumps. Growski and Langley are running a post in their parties. Both candidates are encouraging Mainers to go out and vote. I'm Sierra Joyner reporting for ABC7 and Fox 22. We reached out to Green Party independent Ben Meckeljohn for a comment but was unable to receive a response. Coming up on ABC 7 News at noon, as inflation continues to rise to historic levels, markets drop and interest rates rise. Americans have few options when it comes to their finances. We'll take a look when we return. 
you don't just go to work, you do the work. And it shows you're committed to training and inspiring others. And you play as hard as you work. For that, you need a vehicle as strong as you are to get you where you want to go. Dedication. That's a Varney value. And one you'll find at Varney Buick GMC. Hogan Road, Bangor. If you've been injured and think you can't afford a lawyer, think again. They got my hospital and surgery bills paid for and got me $250,000. Call the twos. We win for you. The Brewer Transfer Station is privately owned, conveniently located at 198 Dirigo Drive in Brewer and is now reopened to the public. We accept metals, appliances, tires, furniture, and more from all surrounding towns. So bring your pickup truck, truck and trailer, or dump truck and come see us. We provide roll-off containers on a temporary or permanent basis with the best service around. We also have all your landscape products from mulch, loam, gravel, sand, and stone. We have it all, and we deliver any size volume. We are veteran-owned. Call 989-4000. Fathers play a special role in people's lives. And this Father's Day, ABC7 and Fox 22 want to help you show your dad how much he is appreciated with a special Father's Day giveaway. We're giving away a $50 gift certificate from the Central Street Farmhouse in Bangor, a $50 gift certificate from Hashi's Auto Enhancing in Levant, and a $50 gift certificate from CNK Variety in Herman. All you have to do is go to our Facebook page, Fox ABC Maine, and like and comment. Kids eat free all summer long. Find out where at hotlunchsummer.com. Ooh, it's a hot lunch summer. Ooh, it's a hot lunch summer. Ooh, it's a hot lunch summer. Looking to improve or upgrade your home? Here with At Home FAB and KBF, we offer a great selection of appliances, furniture, bedding, cabinetry, flooring, and more. We have a friendly, welcoming environment and will work with you every step of the way from start to finish. We service our merchandise. Any fixes or repairs, we can do that too. Our professional team has more than 50 years of experience and is here to help. Stop in and ask about our Synchrony 12 months financing with no interest and see what we can do to make you feel at home. You're watching ABC7 Bangor. A big decision is causing more concern on Wall Street. As the markets drop and interest rates rise, many Americans have few options when it comes to their financial health. ABC's Veronica Miracle has the latest. This morning, 40-year high inflation is taking a bite out of Americans' saving accounts. A new survey finds 67% of Americans are rating their savings to cover rising costs. Savings did rise during the pandemic in part because it was harder to spend money in some ways, but those savings rates have now gone well below those pandemic levels. Another sign of potential problems, credit card debt seeing a resurgence. We're seeing more utilization of credit right now because people are trying to sort of figure out a way to fill in the gap in their household budgets. And there is a risk in that because you're sort of taking on the risk of increased debt. At the same time, you're being hit with these increased prices. On Wall Street, key recession indicators are flashing warning signs. The S&P 500, the index tied to most 401ks, officially entered bear market territory yesterday, which means the market is down 20 percent from its recent high. And now the Federal Reserve could be ready to drop its slow and steady approach when raising interest rates. Economists predict the Fed could increase rates by three quarters of a point tomorrow. That would be the steepest rate hike since 1994. But experts say there is opportunity in the current economic climate. It's not all bad. Rates on savings are slowly but surely going up. The unemployment rate most recently at 3.6 percent. More than 11 million job openings as of last count. And some other good news. Stock futures were up overnight, a sign investors may try to buy low this morning. For the first time in 22 years, Bangor's community transit buses will no longer offer transportation services on Saturdays beginning this week. A.J. Douglas has more on what Bangor city officials say caused the cutbacks. The driver shortage has just really hit us hard again. As of June 18th, community transit buses will no longer offer Saturday routes due to a lack of drivers. 
But Superintendent Lori Linscott says they're pulling out all the stops to get new hires on board and behind the wheel. We're trying everything, um, you know, the weekend um, online ads, you know, that like kind of like Bangor Daily puts out on the weekends. Um, we're trying Indeed. We're, I mean, we're trying, we're, we're advertising on the bus. <laughs> So, I mean, we're trying everything we can. Changes to CDL licensing has made the hiring process more difficult, adding one more barrier for potential applicants. Now you have to stop what you're doing and take in a class to get your CDL, which could take um, eight weeks. As opposed to in the past, we could do on-the-job training and then some, send somebody for their test, and that's no longer possible. City and transit officials understand the absence of Saturday service could be considered a hardship for hundreds in the surrounding area. We do know that unfortunately this is going to have a negative impact for our ridership uh, and we certainly took that into account. This was not an easy decision by any means. It's still important. People still need to get to their workplace. They still need to get to, you know, treatment centers. And um, so we, we still feel that for sure. Community Connection Leadership are working to partner with local CDL programs to get their own in-house CDL training course in the future. O'Donnell says she hopes to bring back six-day service by this fall. In Bangor, A.J. Douglas, ABC 7, Fox 22. Now with Tuesday's business news, here's Leo Jonathan. The S&P closed down nearly 4% and officially moved into bear market territory yesterday, off more than 20% from its high. The Dow closed down 2.8%, down 876 points on the day. The Nasdaq had the worst day of the three, down 4.7%. The sell-off is driven by rising inflation and the prospect of interest rates going up even more. The Fed starts a two-day meeting today, and some economists say they could consider a larger-than-expected hike of three-quarters of a point. Amazon has picked Lockford, California, north of San Francisco, as the first town for deliveries by drone. No word on when they'll begin. And Coca-Cola has partnered with the maker of Jack Daniels Whiskey to sell a pre-mixed version of Jack and Coke. It'll go global after a launch in Mexico later this year. I'm Leo Jonathan with Tuesday's Business on ABC7. Gas prices continue their upward trend, rising almost 10 cents a gallon in the past week. This is the 17th straight day of record highs. According to Gas Buddy's survey of more than 1,200 stations around the state, the average price is $5.07 a gallon. That's almost 57 cents a gallon higher than a month ago and $2.03 a gallon higher than a year ago. A network of adult daycare facilities in Maine will adopt a new policy after a human rights complaint against the company will explain when we return. Are you eligible for Medicare? Joe Montana is, and he enrolled in a WellCare Medicare Advantage plan. He knows about coverage, and WellCare provides the extra benefits he wants. Hi, I'm Joe Montana. When you get to be 65, you have little patience for nonsense and inefficiency. That's why when I qualified for Medicare, I went with WellCare. Take it from Joe. As a WellCare member, you get a $0 or low monthly plan premium on your medical coverage and prescription drugs with $0 generics. And that's not all. Plus, a flex card to pay for extra dental, vision, and hearing expenses, an over-the-counter allowance, and even give-back plans that put money back into your Social Security check every month. Call us at 1-866-636-7403. We'll send you our free Medicare all-in-one guide with everything you need to know about Medicare and tell you how to get a $0 or low monthly plan premium on your medical coverage, prescription drug coverage with $0 generics, dental, vision, and hearing coverage, a WellCare Flex card, money for over-the-counter items, and up to $840 back in your Social Security check every year. WellCare is committed to providing our members great Medicare coverage that includes extra health care benefits. If you want to learn more about WellCare, call 1-866-636-7403. We'll send you our free Medicare all-in-one guide with everything you need to know. Or visit our website, enrollwellcare.com. That's 1-866-636-7403 or enrollwellcare.com to enroll today. WellCare, it's Medicare done well.
love that Chevy Blazer. That's our next SUV. Love that Equinox. That's our next SUV. Nice trailblazer. It was love at first sight. What? The Chevy family of SUVs. Find new options. Find new roads. Qualified lessees can sign and drive this Equinox for around $346 a month. Tax title license and dealer fees are extra. Visit your main Chevy dealer. of adult care facilities in Maine will adopt a non-discrimination policy about their care of transgender people. It's part of a settlement with a woman who filed a human rights complaint against the company. Advocates describe the agreement as a landmark settlement about the elder care for transgender adults. The settlement came three months after the Maine Human Rights Panel ruled in favor of the woman, 79-year-old Marie King, who claimed she was denied a room by an assisted living facility because she is transgender. The Human Rights Commission approved the settlement during its meeting on Monday. Today is World Blood Donor Day. According to, a red, to the Red Cross, a person in the U.S. needs platelets or blood every two seconds. Dr. Baruch Fertel from the Cleveland Clinic says donations during the summertime are important as trauma and accident chances surge. Fertel urges people from all blood types to donate, especially those with type O negative, as it is considered universal and can help anyone during an emergency. There has been speculation regarding the risk of transmitting COVID. Here's ABC's Faith Abube. At the height of the COVID pandemic, debates about returning to in-person school and in-person work revolved around the potential risk of COVID transmission in kids versus adults. And now findings from a study published in pediatrics show that kids are in fact just as likely to transmit and catch COVID as adults. Researchers looked at data from households in Tennessee and Wisconsin from 2020 to 2021 and found that risk of spread from one family member to another was similar between adults and kids. However, one difference was noticeable when looking at the primary COVID case in the house. It seems that the highest risk of transmission was when the primary COVID case was in an individual older than 65 or between the ages of 5 and 11. And the lowest risk of transmission was when the primary COVID case was in someone between 12 and 17 years old. This could be for a variety of reasons that need to be explored in further studies. Of note, the authors of the study did clarify that results may be different if looking at a more diverse population or more crowded households. It is evident that more research is needed in this area, especially as the study predated the Delta and Omicron variants that more recently affected the U.S. With this Medical Minute, I'm Faith Abube. When we return, Devin Biggs has your five-day forecast. If you've been injured and think you can't afford a lawyer, think again. There's absolutely no fee unless we win money for you. I called the twos when I was hit by a speeding driver. Lowry and Associates started working for me for no money up front. I never paid a penny out of pocket and they settled my case for over $165,000. I'm Jim with Lowry and Associates. Call the twos. We win for you. If you hurt in an accident, what do you do? Call 2 2 2 22 22 Dirk Bentley. Beers on Me Tour 2022, June 23rd, Maine Savings Amphitheater, Bangor, Maine. And he's bringing along special guests, Ashley McBride. Let's just stick to the one night stand. And Travis Denning. You know who, and her name is Abby. Dirk Bentley, live in concert. On sale now at waterfrontconcerts.com or ticketmaster.com. Part of the Varney Insurance Concert Series. I'm 82 years old and I have collapsed arches, which means the first thing that hits the ground is the bone in my, my arch. I came to Comfort Shoes four years ago because I couldn't walk without pain. And she spent so much time on my feet getting the right shoe and we finally found the right pair. Once you made these orthotics for me, I have no pain. These are so comfortable. I have no discomfort. I feel like I could go running. And I thank you and Comfort Shoes for that.
Welcome back. The Maine Department of Public Safety reports there have been 155 motorcycle crashes, resulting in 11 deaths this year alone. New motorcycle operators are required to participate in a basic riding instruction course before obtaining their license. But due to the increase in fatal accidents, bikers are also encouraged to complete a one-day advanced course to brush up on their skills. Owner of A&J Motorcycle Safety School, Larry Estes, says state-required safety courses will cover speed, maneuvers, quick stops, friction zones, and more. Well, riding motorcycles is a perishable skill, so if we don't go and practice these skills, either by going to a park lot or going to uh, a training facility and then where they can show us what to do and how to do things properly, we forget how to do things and we create bad habits. Estes asks that motorcyclists wear bright colors and complete the one-day advanced training. Other drivers are asked to remain focused and avoid electronic distractions when behind the wheel. Now let's check your full forecast with Devin Biggs. Devin? All righty, happy Tuesday afternoon. Your full weather forecast brought to you by Scott's Recreation, New England's largest trailer dealer, home of Maine's lowest camper and tractor prices, with locations in Turner, Manchester, Herman, and Orono, Maine. All righty, so we have rain outside the country right now. Some is just gonna move back into parts of our viewing area Throughout the afternoon period, say this could give us a few sprinkles, maybe an isolated shower, even a few rumbles of thunder not out of the question. But for now, though, many of us seeing some sunshine as well, so it's not too bad out there as we do move forward. Say there's a couple areas of low pressure. Here's one right about in here. The other one located right here. This one right here is what's bringing the rain chances with us. So the high pressure will set up shop, give us a few opportunities for some nice days. The more showers and storms arriving as we head towards your Friday. But wave heights right now, not too bad. Only at around two feet across the viewing area, three feet farther down toward the south and east. But of course, gusty winds on the way, getting up to around 25 miles per hour today. Backing off later on tonight, though, so things will start to look decent after that. Maybe a few wind gusts up to 10 miles per hour, and that'll be about it as we head towards your Wednesday. We're average high is now 74 degrees. We'll do about that today in the middle 70s, upper 70s. Wednesday, back down into the middle 70s by Thursday, then back up into the upper 70s Friday. Cooling off a little bit more on Saturday with a chance for rain, the lower 70s by Sunday into Monday as well. Let's talk about the humidity, though. There will be a chance for some higher dew points as well, getting up into the lower to middle 60s by Friday, so when you get warmer temperatures by that point, we'll feel a little bit more muggy, so maybe a little bit warmer, but nothing too ridiculous overall. Your UV index forecast for today is at a 7. That's high, so a burn time of around 30 minutes, so hats, sunglasses, sunscreen, and shade will be needed as we do head out the door today. But moving forward, though, again, a few isolated sprinkles, showers, even a few rumbles of thunder not out of the question today with some of the clouds that will be moving in too. Clouds clear out of here later on tonight. Some fog not out of the question either. Then by Wednesday, looking nice. A lot of sunshine, maybe a few passing clouds. Thursday will also be nice as we do move forward. So your forecast for today, middle 70s, a few showers and thunderstorms not out of the question. The north wind getting up to about 15 miles per hour. And for tonight, 53 degrees, a few isolated showers early, areas of dense fog late. The north wind getting up to about 5 to 10 miles per hour. Here's a look at your extended forecast, though, so nothing too ridiculous moving forward as we'll be watching for a partly cloudy sky on Wednesday. Highs close to 80 degrees, middle 70s by Thursday under a partly cloudy sky. More storms by Friday and Saturday. Friday's high in the upper 70s, upper 60s for Saturday. Thank you, Devin. At least it's raining and just about enough so we don't have to water too much. I guess that's a good way to look at it. That's all for ABC 7 News at noon. Thanks for watching. I'm Susan Farley. We'll see you this evening with Peter Dubois and Beth Jones on ABC 7 News at 6. Have a great afternoon.